Oh no! That password can be guessed easily by others. We need to use strong passwords to make it more difficult for hackers to take over our accounts. Wait! That link looks suspicious. Oh no, look at what he's doing. That deal looks way too good to be true. Always check for signs of phishing, especially those that ask you for your personal information. Better be safe than sorry. Don't ignore that. It's important to update your devices and software so you're protected against the latest malicious threats. Oh no! The hackers managed to take over his system. It's going to be tough to fix that, but I don't blame him. It's too easy to fall for cyber threats like these nowadays. You know what? I'm going to find out more about what we can do to protect ourselves online. Hi everyone, I'm Sandra, and I like to think that I'm pretty savvy when it comes to things on the internet. But everything on the internet and in cyberspace is changing so fast these days, it's really hard to keep track. So I'm glad to say that today we have Mr. Gaurav Kirthi, an expert in all things cyber. Hi everyone, I'm Gaurav. I'm the Deputy Chief Executive of the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore, or CSA for short. Today, I'd like to challenge you in a game of expert versus novice. On this iPad, we'll have a word related to the internet popping up. I'll give my view on it, and then I'll leave it to you, the expert, to chip in. All right. Let's get to it. Mobile applications. Personally, I use mobile applications all the time for groceries, shopping, everything. Well, mobile applications are amazing. And we're on this journey as a country to be a smart nation. We want people to use digital technologies to make their lives better. Today, if I go down to the Hawker Center, you don't even need to bring a wallet because you can use applications like PayNow or GrabPay to pay the Hawker stall for anything you've bought. You mentioned the term Smart Nation. Could you tell us a bit more about it? I'm glad you asked. Smart Nation is a journey. Singapore is trying to use digital technologies to make life better for everyone. You imagine the experience we've just had over the COVID-19 period. Digitalization has changed the way we work, live and play. Working from home, attending home-based learning classes, uh, connecting with your friends over video conferencing, even just watching Netflix. All of that, the amazing benefits are made possible because of digital technologies. You're right. I can't imagine being stuck at home all day without my phone or my computer. And that's why we need to embrace digital technologies. The benefits are amazing. But the downside is that as we get more and more involved with digital technology, cybercrime has also gone up. And that poses a danger too. So that means we have to protect ourselves not just in the physical world, but in the digital world as well. Let's take a look at the next word. Internet of Thing. I recently installed a home camera to check on my dog when I'm not at home. I can even talk to him from here. It's really cute. Is that Internet of Things? It is. So smart home cameras are just one of the types of devices which we call Internet of Things, or IoT for short. An Internet of Things device is any device that connects to the internet. Uh, smart home cameras, light bulbs, smart door locks, even refrigerators are now considered Internet of Things devices because they connect to the internet. In fact, by 2025, there are some estimates that every adult will own more than nine IoT devices. I mean, that's fantastic. But the problem is, each of these devices is a new opportunity for a hacker to do bad things to you. In 2020, we saw a case where cyber attackers used weaknesses in home security cameras to upload the footage onto the internet. It's ironic. The very devices you buy to protect yourself are the ones that are used to compromise your privacy. That's terrifying indeed. Does it mean I shouldn't install home security cameras? No, no, no. It's, it's really just about understanding the risks that you're taking and making sensible decisions. You shouldn't avoid buying all of these things, but just be a smarter consumer. In fact, the Cybersecurity Agency recently announced the Cybersecurity Labeling Scheme. It's a rating scheme that has four asterisks. So one being the lowest, four being the highest. The more asterisks you have, the better the device is in terms of cybersecurity. Easy to remember, it's a lot like the aircon system where you have five ticks for good energy efficiency. So try and buy devices that are more secure. Thanks for the tip. I'll definitely keep a lookout for it next time. Let's take a look at the next word. 
Total Defence. I remember during my secondary school days, we used to commemorate Total Defence Day. I remember there were five pillars, military, economic, civil, social and psychological defence. Well done, good memory. Thank you. But did you know that there's a sixth pillar now? Digital Defence. And Digital Defence tells our citizens to be ready to deal with and defend against cyber threats and fake news. Didn't know that. Definitely bear in mind that we have six pillars instead of five. Let's take a look at the next word. Cyber attacks. Why are there people who want to attack us? Well, it's sad but true. There are cyber attackers out there and they're trying to compromise our accounts, steal our data, attack our systems. In fact, many of them do it for financial reasons, trying to get money out of us. Some of them do it for espionage, they're trying to steal our data. Cyber attackers can range from petty criminals all the way to very sophisticated actors using very sophisticated equipment. Oftentimes, they're trying to attack what we call CIIs. CIIs? What's that? I don't think I've heard of it. CIIs are critical information infrastructure. CIIs are computer systems directly involved in the delivery of essential services like water, energy, banking, healthcare, or transportation, just to name a few. Just look around you, whether it's the traffic lights controlling the flow of cars, the MRT signaling systems, or the electricity grid that powers our appliances. And if an attacker was able to compromise or attack one of these, the consequences could be really terrible. In fact, in 2015, cyber attackers managed to compromise three Ukrainian power plants and cause massive blackouts. The consequences really were devastating. I see why cybersecurity is so important now. It's not just to protect my phone, but to protect our very way of life. So do you know how to protect your device? I actually do. Oh, well, let's hear that. First, use strong passwords. These are passwords that have at least 12 characters, have upper and lower case letters, numbers and symbols. That's right. I have a problem though. Every time I come up with these really complex passwords, I can't remember them at all. I have a simple tip for you to remember. Instead of creating complicated passwords, why don't you use passphrases? For example, what's your favourite drink? Milk tea, 50% sugar with pulp. Okay, we can work with that. So a passphrase would be milk tea, capital M, capital T, 50%, 50%, with pearls. You can use capitals as well. And now you've got a passphrase that's longer than 12 characters. It's got uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, all in and easy to remember. You're absolutely right. I should change my password now. Uh, no, no, don't use that exact password because you just told everybody what it is. In fact, you should never share your passwords with anybody because what's the point of having a good lock if you give the key to everybody? Use strong passwords and try to change the default password every time you have a new account and don't use the same password for different accounts. Thanks for the tip. I'll be sure to change my password when no one is looking. Next, use 2FA, two-factor authentication. 2FA is like an extra lock on the gates of your house. So depending on where the second factor is sent to, it could be sent to my phone as an SMS, or it could even be biometrics, where I use my fingerprint or my face. That's right, I'm very impressed. Do you have any other tips? The third one is to update your software regularly and use antivirus. This acts as an extra shield so that your phones and systems are up to date. And I know a lot of people might forget to update their software. So an easy tip is just enable mm -hmm. auto updates for all of your apps on your phone. What's this? I've got a message asking me to download a free app so I can watch movies online. No, don't do that. So if you're getting messages with links to applications or promises of prizes, particularly to lucky draws that you don't remember entering, it's most likely a phishing scam. A phishing scam is where an attacker sends you a message with the promise of something, of, of a reward, with a link, and if you click on the link, you will most likely have your accounts compromised. That's terrifying. Lucky you're here to stop me in time. I always get these messages from WhatsApp or my social media accounts telling me to click on a link or fill in my personal details to get some free gifts. That's very common. And in fact, you'll find that some of these attackers impersonate friends, contacts, officials, organizations, and they try to scam you into giving up personal details. Next thing you know, you'll see unauthorized transactions on your bank accounts or your mobile wallets. I wonder what would have happened if I clicked on that link earlier. I'm glad you asked. Let me show you how easily a hacker can take control of your mobile devices if you click on one of those links. First, the user begins by downloading a free app from an untrusted source like a third-party app store or a direct download link. In this example, let's go with the free movie app. We usually don't pay attention to the permissions that the app asks for, 
But when we click accept all permissions, we might unknowingly be giving the hacker access to our phone. Once the app has been installed, the user can now browse a wide range of free movies. But what he doesn't know is that his phone has already been hacked. And when the user is enjoying his free movie, the hacker remotely launches the app, gaining access to the user's phone without the user's knowledge. Now that the hacker has access to the phone's camera and microphone, they can see and hear everything that the phone has access to. My IC is t 996 z That's a really scary thought because if you think about it, you get your one-time pins via SMS. So the hacker could gain access to your banking accounts by gaining access to these SMS one-time pins that are meant to be kept secret. Once the malicious app has been installed on your phone, the hacker can gain access to it even if you turn it off. And all this because you installed the malware on your own phone by downloading an untrusted app. What? That's crazy! I wouldn't want someone snooping around in my phone, accessing my files, photos, or even my chat messages. This is making me really uncomfortable. Is there anything we can do? Well, first of all, always download reputable mobile apps. Go to the official app store, check the user comments, check the ratings, and most importantly, don't download apps from third-party stores or worse still, from links that are sent directly to you. Ah yes, and I'm also meant to update my phone regularly and install an antivirus software. An antivirus software will help to detect any malicious apps so I can take the necessary actions to stop it in time. Is there anything else I can do? Well, here's a pro tip. Even if everything seems fine and you've downloaded the app, check the data used for that mobile app. If something seems unusual, it's sending a lot more data back than it should be, then maybe that app is a malware. Thanks for the tip. I'll definitely do that. Hey Sandra, I have a question for you. Do you like going to cafes? Cafe hopping is one of my favourite things to do. Okay, and when you're at these cafes, do you connect to the uh, random unsecured Wi-Fi that sometimes doesn't even require a password? Sometimes, especially if my data is running low. Do you know that by doing that, you're putting yourself at risk? What? How? Well, a cyber criminal who connects to the same Wi-Fi point could gain access and eavesdrop on your phone. They can then find out sensitive information like your username and your password. Let me show you how. When we're out, it's common to connect to a free public Wi-Fi because it's convenient and free. But we have to be aware that not all free networks are legitimate. Sometimes it could be a spoof network set up by the attacker. Once the user connects to the free Wi-Fi, they're brought to the welcome screen. Nothing seems strange or suspicious here as the user logs into the network. Unknown to him, malware has already been installed onto his device. His files are being encrypted and he cannot access them. He has downloaded a type of malware known as ransomware, which locks your access to files until you pay a ransom. So you mean he can't access his files unless he pays the cyber criminal? That's daylight robbery! Does that mean I shouldn't use public Wi-Fi anymore? Not necessarily. I mean, there are advantages to using public Wi-Fi. You just need to take the proper precautions. When you're on a public Wi-Fi, just don't do sensitive transactions. Don't do online banking. Don't go to websites that require you to log in with your username and password because you don't want to lose access to, for example, your TikTok account, right? Of course not. That would be a tragedy. But casual surfing on the internet would be okay? Casual surfing's okay, but I would recommend that you visit websites with an HTTPS. HTTPS makes that the website is secured and you'll see a little padlock icon next to the URL. The S stands for secure, and it means that the traffic is encrypted, so you're less likely to get hacked. Also, I would disable file sharing. This means that an attacker who's on the same Wi-Fi network as you can't gain access to your files on your device. Is there a pro tip for this? One other important tip is to always do backups regularly. Definitely will do. It's interesting, but also scary to know how easily we fall victim to cybercrime. It's not like in the physical world. You can't even see when someone's compromised your files. It's not like someone's snatching your wallet or breaking into your house. It's important to be cautious, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. As long as you follow the cyber tips and stay vigilant, you'll be okay. So Sandra, do you remember the cyber tips? Yes, of course. I'm a fast learner. First, use strong passwords and enable 2FA. Second, 
always make sure that your software is regularly updated. Third, install an antivirus software. And lastly, make sure that you check for signs of phishing before accessing anything online. Technology has become part and parcel of our daily lives. Our connection to the internet, unfortunately, makes us an attractive target for cyber criminals. Everyone has a part to play for cybersecurity. I strongly encourage you to share these tips with your friends and family to help keep them safe online. I've learned so much today. I feel like I'm ready to be a cyber defender. There are many exciting cybersecurity jobs available. If you're interested in cybersecurity, you can participate in our Youth Cyber Exploration Program Bootcamp, where you can learn the fundamental concepts of cybersecurity through hands on labs. You can also play as a cybersecurity forensic analyst to learn how to solve cyber crimes. If you're interested to find out more about our programs or the Smart Nation Scholarship, head over to the CSA website. Today has been really insightful. I hope that all of you watching this have learned just as much as I did. Let's all do our part to keep our cyberspace safe and secure. Well, thanks, Sandra. I had a lot of fun sharing. I hope you learned something important, and I hope that these cyber tips help keep you safe online. Catch you all later. Bye. Bye.